Got somewhere to be? (laughs) 
Good morning, everyone. Happy Palm Sunday to you all, that it is this beginning of Holy Week, that Lent has ended. For all of you who are keeping disciplines, stop it. <laughs> that, uh, that, it is this, that this week is the time of holiness, it is the time of the journey to the cross and the journey to Jerusalem and the resurrection of Christ. And so welcome. Welcome no matter what your heart holds, whether it, it holds joy and wonder, whether it holds sadness. Know that all of it has been encountered and will be encountered this week, and all of it has been made holy. And it is so for us to head to Jerusalem. So this morning, we are going to process. We're going to come in, and we're going to go to the left, and we are going to sing our first hymn while we do it. I know chewing gum and walking, like all of that sort of thing. But we have, we have our incredible choir to lead us and to guide us. Um, but before we do, we need to warm up our voices. And so the only way to do that is, as you know here, that uh, it is our tradition that should, uh, should your birthday fall on Sunday, uh, we, I will punk you out. And uh, on this day, uh, Gary Fernandez, right over here, it is his birthday. So let's sing happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gary. Happy birthday to you. Both sound fantastic. Let us to Jerusalem. Ready? Children, the 
sweet Hosanna ring. And prayers of anthem before thee we present. Thou art the King of Israel, thou David's royal son, who taught and touch and cometh the King and blessed one. To thee before thy passion they sang their hymns of praise. That's one thing did our melody we raise. It accept their praise and accept the prayers we bring. Who in all good delighteth, thou good and gracious King. Glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna. Let us join together in our call to worship. Come and worship as we celebrate Jesus heading for Jerusalem, where Jesus knew he would come up against all the powers of hell and empire, where he would be abandoned, rejected, betrayed, humiliated, flogged, and nailed to a cross. And yet he kept on walking. Jesus knew that every step he took was one step closer to his death, he kept on walking. He knew that before he died, he would have to confront the power of empire. He kept on walking. He knew that he would be betrayed to death by one of his friends on the road. He kept on walking. He knew that he would be falsely tied to a corrupt and unjust legal system. He kept on walking. He knew he would be flogged and tortured and almost beyond what he could physically bear. He kept on walking. He knew his mother's heart and the hearts of all who loved him would be broken. He kept on walking. He knew that in his task he would bring the redemption to the world. He kept on walking. He knew that when all of it was through, he would bring perfect love to a world who so desperately needs it. He kept on walking. So today, let us worship Jesus so that we too may keep on walking in his love. Let's join together in our unison prayer that you'll find. God of all, you came into this world with the power of a king and with the heart of a servant, giving up your life even to death on a cross so that you could make us your own. Give us the same mind as you so that to know you, our, our royal power, and glory as we pray together the prayer you have taught us, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. It's now time for our children's talk. So if your kids want to come on up, come on down, gang. Good morning, Mr. Benjamin. morning, Eli. Yeah, you're going to get one. Don't worry. Good morning, fellas. Hello, everybody. So nice to see you. I hope you're doing well. So good, 
so this morning is called Palm Sunday, right? Why do we call it Palm Sunday? Because we have hands and we have palms? Is that why? No? That's right. It's the week before Easter. Before, and, that, and that it was the time when Jesus came into Jerusalem and everybody celebrated. Everybody was so excited that he was there. They were so excited. You know how excited they were? They were that excited. They were so excited that they literally threw palms in the air. That they literally threw, uh, threw them down so that he could walk on them. They were excited because they were coming, because he was coming to see them. And what I want you to remember about this, uh, about this Palm Sunday more than anything else, there's all kinds of other things we can talk about, but that we too can be excited about Jesus coming to see us. That Jesus wants to come to see us, that Jesus wants to spend time with us, and that in that, Jesus can be excited to spend time with us, and we can be excited to see him, so that we can throw palms in the air too, our own, in our own way, and in our own time. So I want you to, all that you can all take one of these guys, so that if you got a palm this morning, maybe you can have one of the adults help you turn it into a cross. So that you can keep it and you can remember it. You got two, Eli? All right. Okay, let's say a blessing before you go. Dear God, bless these children and let them know that as it, no matter how excited they might be to see you or to see anybody in their life, that you are more excited to see them. Let them know this all the days of their life. And, and guide them in that way. We pray this in your name. And let the church say, Amen. All right. Thank you, gang. Let's go. You, yeah. You're headed downstairs. Yes. So the tradition... Of Christ is that on the uh, of Christianity is that on the on the calling of hosannas we we wave our palms. So hosanna, church, and you can call it hosanna too. Hosanna, hosanna. yes, excellent. We come now to our time of prayer when we have the the chance to. Lift up those things that we have carried. Lift up our hopes. Lift up the very, the very worries and the wonders of our days. And so what is it that we might pray for on this Palm Sunday? Other prayers this morning. Ms. Gale? Dell. Got it. Thank you. Other prayers. Other prayers this morning.
Thank you. Other prayers this morning? Let us go to our God in... Oh. We... Sh- We will all play, pray for the discipline of our tongues. Or <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, you entered Jerusalem so many years ago to declare to that city, to declare to that place, to declare that time that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. You came to declare it not just there and not just in that place, but in all places and at all times. What a, what a joyous and wondrous surprise that, that we as humans might come to know God face to face the love that you have for us and your coming into this world on a donkey. Lord, we ask that you would pray for our Sunday school and for the kids that are a part of it and for all those teachers, for the people who have been volunteering week in and week out to make this program happen, that your, your love and your grace might surround them and that they may be lifted up as they learn more of your love for them. Lord, we ask for your blessing and your guidance and your, and your holy providence to guide Lee into the place that, that you're preparing for him. Give him hope and give him strength in these days. Lord, hold Daryl in the palm of your hand in this hour. Uh, let him know healing and let him know peace in these days. Lord, we ask that you surround Dell with your goodness and that in all the, the, the wisdom that you have and the unfolding of things uh, may be with him in these days. We ask your, your prayers for, for Bruce and for Nancy and for Keegan, for all of, all of their family, that, that they may know your, their, the, the very special need that, that each one of them has, uh, the, the grief that they carry, the worry, the, the loss, the, the infirmity, and that they might be answered in kind, that you as the great physician might know how to to help and hold and to heal all. Lord, we ask we, for your prayers, for, our, for prayers for Barbara and for Beverly and for, for their families and for, their, and for those whom they, whom they love, that as you hold them in their healing and their grace, that your goodness and your wonder may come to pass, that the peace that surpasses all understanding might be upon them. And Lord, we ask for for all of us, that, uh, that as, we, uh, as, as we speak in this world, we may speak your wisdom and your love, that we may, that we may seek to, uh, to bring goodness and helpfulness with all that we bring, and that we might know uh, the, the ways to uh, hold back that which you would not have us speak into this world. In all this, there are so many things that remain in our hearts and in our minds, and we lift them up to you in this moment. That in this moment of silence, we offer you the things that we don't speak aloud. We offer you the things that, that worry us, that maybe we can't even articulate. We offer to you the things that, in your triumphal entry to this, on this Sunday, that you have already overcome. Lord, in all these prayers and the prayers that remain in our hearts and our minds, let us, let us ever and always remember that you came into Jerusalem not, in the way, not through the main gate, but through the sheep's gate. Not, through the, not in the, on a high horse, but riding on a donkey. And that in it and in that way that, we might, that you might ride into our hearts and into our lives the same way unsuspecting in a way that we don't see it and that we don't know it 
but that when, as you arrive, the, the very experience calls us to know your love and your grace and your wisdom deeper than we could have ever imagined in the very overcoming of death in this world. We pray this, O oh God, in your name, who came riding on a donkey. Amen. You, you can't be in a bad mood and listen to a ukulele. So. Uh, this morning, uh, I, I just want to run through the announcements of this week, of, of what's, what's unfolding this week and in terms of the offerings of the church. So immediately following our service, we have uh, our Palm Sunday tea party, which don't be, don't get weird on me that we have the opportunity to gather uh, in this high tradition uh, to be able to, uh, to, uh, to, to lean into the finer things of life. And, and I, I love this tradition because I believe all the things that has to go into a tea party, you know, that, that you know, crusts being cut off of things and all sorts of manner of things that I don't understand but seem to be important. But, but it, is, it is a beauty because it re- requires us not to just stuff something in our face and move out the day, but it requires us to slow down it requires us to trust that God has everything else, everything else in the world, so that we can relax into being beautiful, and we can relax into being in, into uh, an, a, the event of finery and wonder, which is the invitation that God has for each of us in our lives. So that's happening this afternoon. Um, this evening is a Taze service uh, for, um, at uh, St. John Newman up in uh, um, 
uh, up in East Freetown. If you have, if, uh, if you have any interest, it's at 7 o'clock. Uh, Taze is a beautifully meditative service. It's, it, the, it's hosted by the Catholic Church, but Taze is not a Catholic thing, so don't, don't conflate the two. But um, it's a beautiful sung service. So it is this, if, if you like music and you like meditative stuff, it is a beautiful uh, tradition that, uh, that they do once a quarter. And that'll be at 7 o'clock tonight. Um, tomorrow, uh, on um, Wednesday, we'll, we'll have our last of our ecumenical Bible ser- series that will be up in, um, all, all at, uh, up in East Freetown at uh, the, the Christian Congregational Church up there. Um, Reverend Doug Stiverson will be teaching. It's the, the last of the great meals of Jesus. Um, it's a great tradition if, you, if you'd like to, to be a part of that study um, as we work through the different meals that, uh, that Jesus had uh, we uh, on Thursday we have the our Monday Thursday service at seven o'clock right here it is a communion service which is one of the reasons we're not having communion today because we will have communion this week uh, it is it, it is the it's the the Monday Thursday service Monday just means uh, it's Latin you know so we get to be fancy but it means mendatum it means the the commandment and it and it's the institution of God's commandment for us and for one another, that God commands us to love one another and to love God and to love our neighbor as ourself. That is, a, that's the, that is the, the institution that happens on that high night, and that's as we come to, uh, to lean into uh, that, the next, those next three days, the triduum. On at 11 o'clock on Easter, uh, we have, uh, on uh, su- Saturday, we have the Easter egg hunt here. Um, if you want to see a whole bunch of kids screaming and having a ball, come on down. It is a great tradition. Uh, we will probably put you to work, but that's cool too. Um, it, but it's a, it's a, it is a, it's, we've been doing it for a few years now, and it's, um, it's really a lot of fun. Uh, and then on Sunday, will be at 10 o'clock, will be Easter worship next week. Uh, I hope you'll avail yourself of some of the things that are to make let let yourself make this week special. Let it stand out a little bit in your life uh, that we might know God's grace for us. So let us rise and sing our next hymn. It is hymn number 185. Ride on, ride on in majesty. seated. The Hebrew scripture lesson this morning is from the 118th Psalm of David. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone 
that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord, the house of God. He has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar, You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. I give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And the gospel lesson is from the 21st chapter of Matthew. When they'd come near Jerusalem, and they had reached Bethphage and the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. And this took place to fulfill what he had been spoken by the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humbled and mounted on a donkey, on a colt and the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him had followed were shouting, Hosanna! Let me start again. Hosanna! To the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna! In the highest heaven, when we, he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all of those who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables and the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer but you are making it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things he did and heard the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Did you hear what they're saying? Jesus said to them, Have you not read? Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babes, You have prepared praise for yourself. He left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Please be seated. When Elon Musk bought Twitter, he made a made a his initial tweet after he realized what he'd gotten himself into. He he tweeted, uh, "If I die under suspicious circumstances, it's been nice knowing you." Uh, To which, not to be outdone, the famous Mr. Beast of YouTube fame jumped in and said, if you die, can I have Twitter? And Elon, having a good sense of humor, went along with it and said, okay. And and Mr. Beast immediately declared, you know, in the high legal claim of elementary schools everywhere, no takesy-backsies. Our desire to kind of get over, our desire to come out of the 
the uh, you know on the best end of a deal kind of in some ways is inherently childish in, in those with those you know with, in our takesy backsies sorts of way. You know, we all had the experience of, of, of trading some Hydrox for some double stuff Oreos and feeling like we just crushed it. Because nobody like, who really likes Hydrox? I mean, come on. It's this, and, and, and it, what makes this exchange so funny is that the, literally here are two billionaires. You know, I mean, so, uh, you know, yes, Mr. Beast, by the way, is the first YouTuber billionaire that he uh, is... Uh, he, uh, the, in, the, in, the, in this exchange of no takesy backsies. In life, de, however, declaring no takesy backsies uh, actually is, uh, has about as much fu- power as calling shotgun. You know, shotgun's a big deal in my family. Whoever calls shotgun, there's, there's been contention. Uh, but the thing about it is, it, and it's great as long as people around you will tolerate you and let you have what you, what you want when you say shotgun. But, but, you know, when the police are handcuffing you and stuffing you in the back of the squad car, calling shotgun doesn't really work. Don't ask me how I know. But getting your way doesn't, isn't set you free from the consequences of putting somebody else in the back seat. You know, it's this, this no takesy backsies thing kind of falls apart once we get to real world relationships and real world consequences. And what we find in Palm Sunday, what Palm Sunday is all about, its whole anchor and its whole idea is that God takes, is in the business of taking back. When God has every ability, every reason to say, no takesy backsies, because what you all have done Particularly when you look at the world in the first century, what, the, the, what, what Pompeii looked like, what the Romans were up to, what, what was going on. God had every right to say, no takesy backsies. But God's love for humanity was such that, no, I'm go- I, this is a, I've had enough of this and says, I'm actually going to take you back. I'm going to take you back in the grand parade of Palm Sunday. That in, instead of saying you know, you're just not worth the trouble. Jesus is saying, I'm coming to take back Israel. I'm coming back to take authority over the temple. I'm coming back to take authority over this blood system of debt that you've all set up. I'm coming back to even conquer death and death's domain. I'm coming to set this thing right. Christ, instead of trying to get out of responsibility for the world, actually radically shows up and takes responsibility for all of it. He takes all the responsibility, all of the authority of, of, what, of, of the, the evil that, that humanity can dish out and, and the entire kind of mess that the world was in the first century and kind of the, the slightly less of a mess that the world is today. This is the process of Christ's regeneration with humanity that begins today in this week. I think it's the highest and most perfect, powerful thing a leader can do. And, and I'm not alone in that. Uh, Jocko Willenick, who's a Navy SEAL commander, who he, he does a lot of writing and speaking, uh, he wrote a book called Extreme Ownership. And he writes this, On any team, in any organization, all responsibility for success and failure rests with the leader. The leader must own everything in his or her world. There is not, no one else to blame, The leader must acknowledge mistakes, admit failures, take ownership for them, and develop a plan to win. Willinick, in leading SEAL teams, actually finds himself mimicking in this small, tiny little way what Christ ultimately does on this Sunday. When he enters into the beginning of this Holy Week journey, is taking full responsibility and authority for humanity. Don't believe me? Let's look. Because this, this is why we celebrate this day. He sends the two disciples out to get the donkey and the colt so that, he can, so that Jesus can ride on the colt. So the, uh, we think that, uh, and, and whenever he, they're encountered, what do they say? What, is he, what do they say, you know? duck down, smash the window, and run like heck? You know, is that what he does? He says, no. He says, confront them, you know, confront the owner and say, the Lord needs them. 
And sure enough, it worked. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're walking through the day and some, you know, two sketchy guys come up to you and say, I, you, know, you know, give me your car keys, and you say, well, no, like, and they say the Lord needs them, I don't know if I'd necessarily advise you following that advice. But here it works. And here it works because of the fact that it is, God, that it is this beginning place where God steps into the, this notion and this power and authority of saying, actually, I own everything. That everything you've ever been given, everything you've ever worked for, every paycheck you ever got. You ever, anybody remember their first paycheck? Like that little thing, you're like, oh, my first paycheck. I was like, I had 14 year olds washing dishes. My first paycheck. And then I found out about taxes. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, that's not as much fun as I thought it was going to be. But, but it was my first paycheck that, you know, we think we got something, you know, that was yours that you earned. And that I'm not, and I'm not, this is not dis- disagreeing with this notion of, of earning things and, and, uh, and, and trying to, but the ultimate reality underneath our life is that, that every breath in our chest, every heartbeat that comes to us, every thought even that has been a part of our life, don't come from us. We don't, that we didn't build that. It was a gift. It's a gift from God. Just like the people that love you are gifts from God. Just like the, the things that you have are the material things that you have. And so Jesus starts in this broad sense in this material world and says, oh, by the way, all those things that you all think you own, that's cute. But they actually are all owned by God. And, and, and that my love for you is such that I get to, I, you know, you get to play with them for a while. Second, the donkey is a foal. So, so the, the, he's going to ride this foal, right? So a thing about a foal is a foal is an unbroken donkey. It's a donkey that has never been ridden. So I don't know about you, but if you've ever seen a donkey that like, is kind of maybe kind of touchy, kind of a little skittish, doesn't really know what's going on, well, that's this donkey. There's no reason a human being should be able to get on this donkey in a crowd of 5,000 people uh, processing with sheep running everywhere and people yelling and screaming. This is a wild donkey that ends up, what? Acting perfectly tame and subdued. When we sing, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres, we discover in the Jesus and Jesus riding it on a donkey, that everything wild, all those things that you think are out of control, all those days when, you know, the humidity is about 98% and your hair just goes poof, and like there's no control in it. Like, I, I don't know, I'm told it happens. That, uh, that, uh, that in all of that, God's got control over that. Even the very wildness of it, God comes to subdue. Third, Jesus, Jesus enters the temple through the sheep's gate. This, uh, this quarter, this gate, at the, which is at the same time, on the right, the tail end of a quarter of a million to half a million lambs that just went through this gate. I want you to consider what it looks like, a quarter of a million to half a million lambs. I want you to consider what the, what the uh, ground looks like with a quarter of a million and half a million lambs. And yet people are still doing what? Throwing their cloaks down. They must really like him. Because that's going to take a lot of tide stick like, to come out. Like, that this encounter in the coming through the sheep's gate is, this, is to actually create a way for us to be in relationship with God. Because he doesn't come in as the, through the king's gate. He comes in through the sheep's gate. Which, is the, which was the whole foundation of the, of the temple sacrifice system. Those quarter million lambs are going to be killed over the course of about 12 hours in the next, in, in, uh, on, for, on, from Wednesday to Thursday. Do you, when, when the historians write about what Jerusalem looked like in the middle of that, is that they said the streets of Jerusalem were ankle to knee deep in blood through the entire city. That's what it looked like. You want the old timey religion? Well, that's the old timey religion. That that and and Jesus enters into the temple through the sheep's gate to do what? To break this blood system. 
this blood system that, that was present all over the world, present in the pyramids of Teotihuacan, present in the blood-stained rituals of the Druids in Ireland, present in, uh, throughout the Celtic world, throughout the planet, came in to break that system by entering through the sheep's gate. Fourth, he drives out the money changers in the temple. My favorite part. Uh, that in the authority over, where he takes the authority over the priesthood and themselves. You bankers, you priests, you, that, you've wedded, that wedded up the sacred and, the, and mammon, we're all done. And here's the reason. It, it comes right out of Revelation, but I won't, I won't give you the quote because, you know, it's a timed event. But it's no, this notion that we treat human beings as, as commodities or as chattel, or as glorified ATMs, that there's a lead in the world that does that. And that gets broken. That gets overcome when Jesus flips the tables in the temple and chases out the money changers. Fifth, he heals the blind and the lame. Just, it almost seems like an oh, by the way, right? Like, oh, he's headed out. Like, hey, all right, you feel, you feel better, you feel better, everybody feel better. Like, it's almost, in the, in the text, it almost seems like this. But it's, the, it's, actually take, it's actually in a way of taking back authority over the corruption of the body itself. It says, oh yeah, you think you're sick, you think you're, uh, you're, you're going to die, you think that bad things are going to happen to you, and eventually in your body they will But the long arc is that all of that is going to be healed. From our movement from this life to the next life, the promise that God has given for us. You know, all the illnesses that we so diligently stood six feet apart trying to avoid. uh, You know, Christ walks in and takes authority over them, says, that's healed. That's healed. You can, on all of those places where, and even in our own lives, where we are misunderstood, where we don't see things straight, where we're operating out of our own blindness, Christ comes to give us and gain us real insight. Lastly, and this might not even seem miraculous or authoritative, but I I would submit to you it might be the greatest of miracles or it's certainly the greatest of gifts out of this whole thing. The greatest of takebacks is that Jesus returns to Bethany for the night. Jesus returns to he doesn't go up to the high priest's chair and kick him out. He doesn't go up to the. He doesn't go to the Romans and throw them out of the. Throw them out of the, uh, the the fort. He goes back to his friends, and he spends the night having dinner with his friends. He comes to them with joy as a friend, not with the pomposity of a general, not with the sanctimoniousness of a priest, not with the cruelty of an emperor, but he enters into relationship with the people that he loves as a dear friend. And he eats and he laughs and he lives and he cries with them. And friends, Christ enters this world into your life right here and right now as a dear friend who is there to eat and to laugh, and to live, and to cry with you. All of this happens out of not being crowned a king, not shedding blood, not one, not one drop of blood is shed other than his own. All of this, this surreptitious way that wins on top of winning. Not just great, Jesus Christ's great taking back of humanity, but the true expression of what the psalmist was saying when he said the stone the builder has rejected was the cornerstone. The stone that people have been beating themselves over, beating one another over the head in, over since the beginning of creation has been, is, is rejected. And the cornerstone comes in Christ. Jesus takes radical responsibility and authority for his steadfast love endures forever. Can you hear Jocko Willenick in this? On any team, in any organization, all responsibility for success and for failure rests on the leader. Friends, it's our job. It's our job to look to the leader and to walk in this way to the path that he showed us and the plan that he briefs. 
In, in, his, in one of his other books, uh, Jocko Willenick talks about discipline, equal, which, which is called Discipline Equals Freedom, a field manual. He says, he says this, and I think what's so, what I think is so powerful about this and what he writes is that you, you can read this as kind of like helpful leadership advice, or you can actually read this as an accurate description of what Jesus is about to do in Holy Week, about what's about to happen. Here's the quote. There is no easy way. There is only hard work, late nights, early mornings, practice, rehearsal, repetition, study, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. Now he wrote that as a definition of success in the SEAL teams. But you can hear it as a pretty good definition of Christ's approach to this week that is laid out before him. A Christ that's radical take back of humanity for all of creation. A charge to you and to me to not get ourselves into our own no takesy backsies of our life when we think that we're victims of this or, or victims of that or struggles of this and struggles with that. But rather to step into responsibility for, our, for the lives that God has given us, step into the journey and the, and the wonder and the gift of what it is to walk out this, the, walk behind the one who has magnificently overcome all of the brokenness of the world so that we too may overcome as well, that we too may not walk alone on this path, but we might blaze it together as church and as friends, that we might... It, by one, but follow this path by the one who made us so that we on this Palm Sunday can rejoice and rejoice and rejoice again in life and life in abundance. That is what all this struggle is for. Because friends, victory is ours. Amen. Let us this morning... Offer our gifts to God. It is our tradition that we offer the gifts in our offering boxes. If you'd like to offer them uh, after the service, you're, you're welcome to do so. If you're visiting with us, we would love for you simply to fill out a card in the back uh, and that we might get your, your information so that we might be able to keep, you in touch, keep in touch with you and let you know some of the great things that are happening here at First Congregational Church.
Praise God for blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here Lord, take these gifts and let them go forward and transform the world. Let them open to the goodness and the grace that God has for each, each one. Let them know that your way has come and that all of the struggles, all of the brokenness, all of the difficulty is being overcome in your way and with your will and in your time. We pray this, O oh God, in your name, that these gifts go forward and be a part of the healing of the world. Amen. Let's join together in our closing hymn. It is 187, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna. Go forward this day and know the love of God upon you. Know that it surrounds you and that it is within you. Go forward in the declaration of God's love that it is not only upon the world, but it is upon you. Go forward and own this love that God has for you. We pray this in his name and let the church say,